Pranam Swamiji and good, uh, good evening dear friends. Thank you for this uh, chance to reflect and share a few of my thoughts and feelings about Sri Ramakrishna. The short answer to um, Swamiji asked me to reflect on why we adore Sri Ramakrishna. And the short answer is very simple. It's because when we look at his image, the slightest glance which falls on it, uh, there is a groundswell of emotion that fills up in one's heart. This is no ordinary image, a gaze so divine and so intense that it can still and rivet us at any time that we set our eyes upon it. The short answer will, however, not make for a talk of a few minutes, so I shall try to explore a little bit with you the question in more depth. My first glimpse of Sri Ramakrishna was on the front cover of a mini book um, that was titled Thus Fake Sri Ramakrishna. My recollection of the title of another book alongside it uh, was Thus Spake the Holy Mother. These two mini books I saw in my father's bookshelf many, many years ago in Guwahati, Assam. I was about six or seven years old and I could not understand why the word spoke was misspelled. So I kept wondering about that, but I didn't bother to ask anybody the question. However, without any knowledge or without any understanding of who they were and what they stood for, at that very early age, there was an unmistakable feeling in my heart, in my mind, that these two images are very, very special and they remain in my mind to this day. Foremost among the reasons that come to mind for why we have adoration for Sri Ramakrishna is that on his shoulders stand generations of spiritual luminaries and giants who create teachers, guides, mentors for millions of ordinary people like us. We all grapple with the puzzling questions of who we are, why we live, how we should live. Being attracted to simplicity by nature, I find the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna and the way they are imparted ever so accessible. This brings me nicely to the next reason why I adore so deeply Sri Ramakrishna and his teachings. The embodiment of divinity himself, his teachings give immense hope to us who are ordinary householders. Caught in a web of activity, be it family, society, or professional, we constantly are aware of the ocean of knowledge and of the scriptures, but most of those are inaccessible to me today. The pragmatic, simple teachings, stories, and messages of Sri Ramakrishna to the householder are, very, are really invaluable and very inspiring. Through the Holy Mother's life and teachings, I learned the importance of being compassionate and serving others, no matter who they are. Through the messages of Sri Ramakrishna to busy people, I learned the importance of calling the name of God with sincerity and yearning at least once a day. I learned the importance of continuing my duties while trying to build a sense of detachment from the results of my work. None of these are easy. I also learned that I should be careful about what I soak my mind in. Sri Ramakrishna said, the mind is like cloth. It will take the color of everything or anything that we soak it in. He expressed concern once when he saw a devotee playing the role of a bad man on stage. He reminds us that coloring the mind with undesirable things will cause significant difficulties to us ordinary minds as it will be very hard to then turn our mind to God amidst all the distractions and noise. He teaches us the importance of solitude, to reflect and to pray, the importance of good company so that we do not create obstacles on our path. He quickly dispels the notion that we can do good for the world, that only God can do, he says. We mostly do good to ourselves, so Sri Ramakrishna explains to us that doing our work and serving others with this passion is the only way to purify our hearts and our minds. 
in a world torn badly by war, conflict and strife along religious, ethnic and communal lines. Today, I'm deeply attracted to the tenets and teachings of Sri Ramakrishna, given nearly 150 years ago. They embrace all religions, all paths and all peoples. As a person who believes deeply in the equality and unity of all human beings, the teachings and actions of Sri Ramakrishna and the Holy Mother give us hope for a better world and fill us with awe and admiration. How could they, in the society that they lived in, in their times, in that day and age, how could they transcend all those boundaries through love and compassion? The Holy Mother, who in my mind is inseparable from Sri Ramakrishna, made each living being her very own. She was affectionate to everyone in need, and this was her way of transforming people through love. This was her unique practice of Advaita Vedanta. Rather than the belief that the world is unreal, she emphasized that the entire world belongs to one, and no one is a stranger. Her same-sightedness was flawless and sweeping and manifested in her every word and action. Sri Ramakrishna impresses on us the importance of distinguishing between the real and the unreal. Only God is real. All other things which are impermanent are unreal. The importance of discriminating between them and learning to pay attention to what is real should be our only goal. While we struggle to put these lofty ideals in practice, the fact that we have them explained and taught in a manner that resonates with us and that we have stories of how Sri Ramakrishna and the Holy Mother live these ideals, this fills me with deepest gratitude. A small and humble thought I'd like to share about the teachings and those who have made them accessible to us. We, like all seekers and devotees, are aware of the vast ocean of scriptures. However, many of us, for many of us, it is very um, mind-boggling. It's vast, it's, we don't know where to start, how to begin, what should I read first? What should I do? Do I need to learn Sanskrit? These are the many questions that keep coming up in our minds. But while we figure these things out, following the talks and writings of Sri Ramakrishna's order, I find has provided me with great help and solace. And I would be remiss not to mention the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. And in particular, chapter four, the advice to householders, simple yet profound, one can read these paragraphs again and again and reflect on them. And simple as they may seem, it's remarkable how they can provide very meaningful messages at different stages of our life and in different situations. It will be a book I shall always look to and offer my profound gratitude and thanks to Swami Nikhilananda Ji for the translation to English. More recently, I'm also very fortunate and grateful to have been able to follow explanations of the gospel by Swami Vedanishthananda Ji, arranged by the Zurich Vedanta Circle. Sri Ramakrishna gave to us friends and to the world, Swami Ji and the Holy Mother. The Holy Trinity for us is a unified single reality. Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of divinity and the source, Swami Ji, who shone light on the path for millions of followers, and Srima, who is every, ever so compassionate and protects us every step of the way. I salute the Holy Trinity and bow to them for their grace. And thank you, Swamiji, from the bottom of my heart for imparting these teachings. <coughs> Next is...